Hey, what's up YouTube? This time on the Mazda 6, we are changing the automatic transmission fluid. Uh, the dipstick for that is right here. You have your brake fluid reservoir, and then right below it, you have the ATF. You have a little dipstick here. That's where you're gonna uh, put the new oil in. It's also where you check your levels. You definitely wanna heat up the car first, get the automatic transmission fluid a little more heat it up that way it'll drain better you also want to remove that dipstick while you're draining the sump it'll just help with the oxygen flow and get things out there better i've already jacked up this mazda 6 i have it on the axles back there um, and i've already removed the undercarriage here that's this piece right here uh, there's a bunch of little 10 millimeter bolts one two three four, five, and then it goes along the other side. There's also a little Phillips head screw right here. You need a Phillips four on the other side. Um, that's gonna give you access to the hole underneath the car. I also have these ramps up here that I use a lot. That's what I would typically use, or for a job like this, but um, I, I jacked it up because I get a little more height underneath the um, Mazda 6. That way you could see more. I'm gonna shine my light everywhere. So this is the oil pan and you drain the oil right around there. This is your automatic transmission fluid pan right here. This is called the sump. And this is where about three to four quarts of your automatic transmission fluid is stored. There's a lot stored within the transmission as well that you just can't get to without a vacuum system or multiple uh, dumps. So what I recommend doing is what I do with my Mazda 6 is every other oil change, I change the automatic transmission fluid. And so every time I change three quarts, I have cleaner and cleaner and cleaner liquid. So I never have a complete clean. However, I don't have to pay the dealer like four or $500 to do a complete uh, cleaning. It is recommended you start swapping out your ATF. I think it's like 30 or 40,000 miles, maybe 50. Uh, I've been doing it like I said, every other oil change since around 50,000 miles and this tranny's running strong. Make sure to wear dirty clothes. You will get a little dirty. Your hands are gonna get a little greasy. Gloves are a good idea if you have them. Otherwise, what I like to do is just get a brush and I brush my fingernails because you do get the dirt underneath your fingernails and you just get like a little toothbrush or like some sort of, they sell these little finger brushes that are fairly inexpensive. Yes, eight millimeter. I just use this one here. This is my drain pan. I drain it into here and then I just empty it out and let it recycle. I am gonna be changing my oil at the same time, so I got some wrenches here for the oil. And then I'm using Mercon 5 ATF Vaveline. I've been using this for a really long time. I went on the forums, people said this was fine. I also use this for my power steering fluid for my Mazda 6, and I've changed that out as well, around 100,000 miles with this stuff, and it works just great. I have no issues with this whatsoever, no grinding of gears, you know, smooth shifting, so I'm happy with it. If you want, you can also get the Mazda 6 uh, ATF, which is good as well. So at this point, we're gonna grab our Allen, we're gonna grab our dump bucket, we're gonna put the dump bucket underneath. Always have a rag ready to go. I'm actually gonna crack this a little bit first to get it going. Okay, so once you get that initial crack, this should come out pretty easily. It's not that long. It's a very short screw. Here it is, I can feel it coming. All right, there we go. And now it is draining. You can see it coming out there. And not that much comes out. Draining right now, this is the drain plug that I pulled out, the eight millimeter. This is a magnet there on top. Go ahead and check it and see if you have any little metal shavings here at the top. And I have just a little bit, that's normal. But if you have a big pile up of metal shavings, that means there might be something wrong with your transmission or your grinding gears or something like that. So just give that a little quick check. Once you're done draining it, like I said, I just let it drain for like four or five minutes and then I screw this back in with the eight millimeter. Make sure you tighten it up to spec. I'll go ahead and put the correct specs in the description below. And then as you know, I have the dipstick pulled out. That way it drains better. And when it comes time to fill, it's really important to have a really long funnel like this. It fits in there nicely. And now it's really easy for me to pour my bottles in there versus trying to aim or at one of those smaller funnels that isn't gonna clear all these wires. So as you can see, I mean, that's about three and three quarters quarts because this is a one gallon container. One gallon is four quarts. So I know I'm gonna have to put at least three and a half quarts back into my automatic transmission. So this part's a very easy process of just cracking open these bottles and dumping them in. 
Make sure you do have the bottom bolt on or else this is gonna go straight through from one side to the other. You notice it's a red color, kind of a amber, red, ruby color. And uh, that's clean ATF. ATF turns brown over time. Um, as far as degradation and all that goes, I mean, color doesn't really mean much. This stuff turns brown pretty quickly. Um, you literally would have to take your, and then I like to kind of let it in there to just get the last few drops in there while I crack open the next one. You could like take a sample of your of the ATF that I took out and, t and send it to a lab and have them test it. Don't go too fast, it might spill back out. All right, I'm now on the last one and I'm just gonna go ahead and put a quarter in here. Maybe a quarter, maybe three eighths or so. We now have the ATF in there. I'll, the last thing I'm gonna do is just put on this undercarriage now that everything's all buttoned up. You wanna kinda slide in the back section first, slide it in, make sure you get these tabs over. Make sure to get those tabs over the undercarriage and then just bolt in all these 10 millimeter bolts and then the one Phillips right there. And then we're gonna take the car down off the jacks, just rejack it up, pull it off. Make sure it's on a level surface, run the car for a little while, get it circulated, and then we're gonna check our levels. There you go, you got the two engravings right there. It needs to be in between those two, high and low. So I don't know if you can see that, but I have a just enough fluid in between the two dots. You pull up here and put it in park and then put it back in drive. We wanna make sure the gears are shifting smooth. And then we'll put it in manual. Park, we're in park. Neutrals, new reverse is reverse. Working pretty good. Whoa, that hooked. Nice, good shift. All right, just leave it in drive. Leave it in auto now. Let's get. Caught those gears fast. Bro, so sick. I felt like Fast and the Furious 8. If this video was helpful for you, throw it a little quick like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you guys on the next one.